situation right. normal? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Morning, morning, and welcome everybody. Yeah, some of us are partially here, some of us are partially not. Hopefully, a few of us are completely here, but we we'll have to we we'll have to wait and see see who is and who isn't. Uh, I know some of us have done our homework, uh, but I'm sure some of us haven't. So, what was the homework? GameStop. Hadn't heard of it until Friday. Uh, had a, had a little bit of a look around. Um, yeah, it's it's an interesting. Uh, an interesting thing that's happening is it a blip on the radar or is it a movement that's uh, going to grow and and swell and take over uh, we'll have to we'll have to wait and see so lee are you the financial wizard that understands all of this because uh, i'm not sure that i understand too much i don't think anybody would ever have thought or would think that i am a financial wizard so <laughs> I'll gratefully pass that on to wiser, more financial people than me. Uh, but I did find the story fascinating uh, from a sort of social, uh, looking at trends, looking at what, what's happening. And uh, so I think for the, I think everybody knows uh, what happened that a, a group of amateur traders uh, that had sort of had already formed a, a group on Reddit and decided to band together to raise the stocks of GameStop uh, in opposition to those on Wall Street who were um, betting on shorts that the stock would, would go down. And uh, in the trading, these amateurs actually increased the, the price of the stock and the, those who were shorting it lost out. Uh, and some of the big hedge funds actually uh, lost a lot of money. Uh, it's, it's still ongoing. Eventually what happened is GameStop, um, not GameStop, the, the trading app on which they were all trading, which is called Robinhood, which is, of course is a, quite funny. And I, just as an aside, because I'm on Twitter, I saw that uh, there's a Robin Hood. Uh, I don't know if you saw this, Edward. There's a Robin Hood um, uh, hashed. Uh, what, what do you call it? Handle on uh, that's in the UK. That is actually based on the Robin Hood Society from Sherwood. And there's a, a tweet from the owner that said. Uh, Lovely to have all these new subscribers. Um, we welcome, just to let you know that this is the actual Robin Hood Society and welcome to Sherwood. <laughs> so, um, so Robin Hood app, um, eventually the regulators came in and uh, they, had to, they, they stopped trading. And uh, they also had to, um, build up a pile of cash, which the investors gave them to the tune of a billion dollars. I think where is all this money coming from? Uh, but anyway, so that's just the, the, the summary version of it. And the, the, the idea of this group of amateurs taking on these, the institution, I think, and, and there were some there were some who were doing it purely for the money, right? Let's see if we can push you know, get the money. But there was definitely an ethos of, we are the little guys, we're the underdogs, and we're gonna take on a big business, the stock market, because uh, they, they're all, they're the ones that won 2008, keeps coming up every, uh, almost every article I'm reading is we responding to banks getting the bailout in 2008. And we are the generation whose parents suffered under that. Um, and now we are taking back control uh, and saying we deserve our part of the, our slice of the pie. Um, and, and also just the, the power of Wall Street. Let's, let's just put a ding in this power that that we can speak out. And, and when I was thinking about, you know, is this a trend, not just, so first of all, when I initially read it, I thought, is this 
the beginning of the toppling of capitalism, you know, that we are trying to, to create a new economic order. And that's not what I'm reading into it now. The glee that some of these guys have in the money that they've made. <laughs> Just money has a tremendous power. I don't know if capitalism's going anywhere. Um, but is it at the same kind of trend that Airbnb is disrupting the accommodation industry? Is there the sense of we can, we have got power as the, the little guys to, to do something or as and I think it's starting to happen is now the institution, now the regulators are just gonna shut it down. Um, and it's basically China versus Hong Kong and Hong Kong now is China. There's no Hong Kong and China, Hong Kong is China. And you are, you have to, if you, if you step out of line, you're gonna be crushed very quickly. Uh, so those are my thoughts. Yeah. Thanks, Lisa. I don't know if you can Hong Kong that much, China, but uh, we'll, uh, we'll have to see if Ed can, uh, Ed can unravel that with his uh, past uh, experience and knowledge as an accountant. Does it make any sense at all, Ed? Yeah, I, I thought it was fascinating because um, I just disappeared down this sort of rabbit hole of reading articles and it was, it, I, I, I had a really good time actually. Um, it was, what's interesting about the Robin Hood connection is, of course, you know, Robin Hood was alleged, because he, he's fictitious, um, to have robbed from the, the rich to give to the poor. Well, he obviously didn't work, did it? Because we've still got loads of rich people and loads of poor people. But anyhow, that's beside the side. Um, you know, the various reports I read about the, the, the GameStop incident all put a different spin on it depending on where they were coming from and what they picked up on and made it more glamorous than it was. And I think it's also because one of the platforms, and there are many platforms, is called Robin Hood. And everyone started talking about Robin Hood. Okay, it's, it's, it's one of the bigger ones. And of course, Robin Hood's a sort of beloved folk hero in green tights with, um, you know, a, a jaunty hat rather than what he actually was, a robber, a highwayman. Um, and, uh, you know, I don't think those day traders are taking on the hedge funds to give to the poor or to buy a new frock for Maid Marian. You know? and, and I kind of wonder whether the guys that first started it kind of really did it from greed. Because um, the whole thing seems to me a bit like that three cup trick. You know, and, and of course, all the guys that got in later are going to suffer. They're all going to lose out. So I thought, well, let, let, let's get some, and, and actually it's interesting, the really sort of sober article I read about the incident was on a website I'd never come across before. Someone suggested I read it, which was called Counterfire. And it's actually the website of a revolutionary socialist organization dedicated to the overthrow of capitalism by the working class but it had a very balanced view of what was going on, which I found really strange that a radical organization should be the one person giving a balanced view, whereas the BBC and the Times and the Telegraph were all getting excited about Robin Hood and the froth. So I thought, well, I'll have a pop back in history and see if that could put some sort of context on it. You can see I've been listening to the previous conversations we've been having. And, um, the first thing I thought, thought about was tulips. Now you might remember, well I do, way back in 1636, during the bu bubonic plague, there was very little trading going on because there was very little um, you know, activity. Um, and the young men in, in a town of Harlem in the Netherlands in the, were in a coffee shop with nothing to do. There was no social distancing then. And uh, they amused themselves by buying the few commodities that were available, which was for tulip bowls, but we delivered in the spring. Now, 
Robin Hood has seen a massive growth during the pandemic because there's lots of young men sitting about with nothing much to do. Um, and people kept buying and buying and then they suddenly saw it happening and thought, oh, we must get in there. And I've heard lots of people saying they're a bit concerned about their husbands because they've been buying into shares in, in, in GameStop. Um, I don't know, it, it seems to be a male thing. Um, and I think that's what's happening now. People are getting caught up in it. And of course, that bubble burst. And then about 100 years later, we had the South Sea bubble, that burst. Um, so I think, you know, after a brief, brief flush of colour, this will go back to normal. And the other incident I thought about had nothing to do with money, but it is an example of market manipulation. It's about a singer who first appeared in about the 70s as part of a punk band. And if you remember, the punk bands are about sort of um, anti-establishment. They shunned the established music industry and they often self-produced recordings and distributed them through, through um, small outlets, a bit like this, what's going on with the um, day traders avoiding the stock market. Um, and then this guy, he wasn't very successful, but he, he went solo in the 80s and he wasn't very much of a commercial success, but he had a very loyal following in the club circuit and on the festival circuit. And I perhaps thought of him because he once co-wrote a rock opera with a guy called John Bain, whose stage name was Attila the Stockbroker. Um, and now this guy, John Otway, was very aware of the power of his fan base. And he used to use it to pull off minor publicity stunts. For example, he used them to get the lyrics from one of his obscure 1978 B-side songs voted into the 1999 BBC poll of the top 10 song lyrics all time. Um, it, it's a list that not even Bob Dylan made. So he manipulated that. And then in nine, it's sorry, then in uh, 2002, some of his fans said, said, what do you want for your 50th birthday? And he said he wanted another top 10 hit because he'd had one top 10 hit. So he recorded this song called Bunsen Burner. And the lyrics were designed to help his daughter with her chemistry homework. How anti-establishment rage against the machine is that? And it contains immortal words like, let me be your Bunsen burner, baby. Let me be your naked flame. You're my little pipette, the favorite piece of my apparatus in my chemistry set. You're the kind of carbon I can date. Truly cringeworthy. And his fans all bought it in the same week. And he made three different B-sides. So they had to buy three copies each. And he made it into the top 10. He made it to number nine. And, 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 they had, and in those days, Top of the Pops on the BBC used to play the top 10. So he got on the BBC with this dreadful record. It was horrible. And I think that's what GameStop is doing in a way or, or, or the, the, you know, the day traders and the Reddit guys, because they're focusing on a very tiny part of the market. You know, GameStop is a fairly large company, but I think even its inflated market capitalization is a 20th of someone like AstraZeneca. <clears throat> and then you spread that out over the whole of the NASDAQ and, you know, it is minute. And that's what went on with John Otway. You know, most singles that chart they start off you know with a few sales they build up they chart then they tail off and and the distribution is like a normal distribution the normal distribution curve john otways was virtually he sold nothing the week before nothing the week after was virtually a straight line up and we're getting excited about the the, the peak without thinking about the bulk beneath that beneath that curve and if they tried to do the same thing, you know, if, if John Otway's fans they try to get two singles in, in the chart, they'd have failed. If they tried to get 10 singles in the top 10, they wouldn't have even got noticed. And of course, you know, the big record companies 
always win out. Um, and I think we've seen it with, with the Reddit guys. <coughs> There's been some action with AMC and Blackberry shares, but not to such an extent. They just can't get the volume. And that's what I think is happening. It's just a little interesting spike. Um, it's not being driven by an ideology. It's probably being driven by some guys wanting to make some money. Um, it's probably helped by the fact there's not much going on at the moment. Money's cheap to borrow. So some of these guys have borrowed to invest. Um, so yeah, it, it, it's interesting and it's fun and it, it's nice to think of the little guy. It's nice to think of, but they are not rob, you know, robbing the rich to pay the poor. They're just putting the money in their own pockets and most of them will lose out. But the, the thing that fascinates me though is how it all works because when you short something, you borrow the stock from someone else. So the someone else you borrowed it from thinks it must be worth what it is. And of course, while you've got it, he can't sell it or she can't sell it or they can't sell it. And then the person shorting sells it. So someone must be prepared to buy it. So there's at least two people have a different view from the shorter. And then the one that lent it to them and gets it back, gets back less. So why did he do it in the first place? So that's why I think it's one of those three cup games. Uh, that's my thoughts on it. And I think, I think we'll see it all disappear and I'd much rather buy tulips. Yeah. Go flower gardening, I think is probably a better idea. Yeah, absolutely. So well, if you yes, get a but... chance, do, do look up John Otway, fascinating character. Done some, some really interesting stuff. Great. Thanks. Thanks, Ed. And I, yeah, I love I'd love those I love those analogies uh, that you brought into the picture because I think it's uh, it's exactly that. It's market cycles. It doesn't matter what market it is, uh, there's there's always there's always things that are gonna happen. Uh, take things up and take things down. So, Jasper, over to you. Yeah, I'm, I'm afraid I don't have anything to add today. Uh, and thanks, Ed and uh, Lee. You've uh, done a good job there introducing. I was uh, more in terms of uh, my mind was wandering in terms of the first of all, the what makes this possible that. Uh, markets can be manipulated uh, so connectivity and the technology is playing a massive role in that that nowadays uh, with all the various uh, communication platforms uh, those those people with large followers follower bases and just the power of i know you and you know an next person uh, things can sp uh, spread with the speed of light then uh, secondly uh, we are already bombarded on a daily basis by hundreds of these sort of messages that try and get you involved in their cause. But I'm sure for most of you, 99.99% of the stuff you just not even uh, glance at and you just delete it. Uh, so what? So the question then is, what made this uh, get, get that kind of following and traction? Uh, so uh, I could pick up from uh, the explanation there from Lee and uh, Ed that it had to do with money. So that brings out the old, you know, from all the sins, the, the one is the, 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 the greed, the greed factor. So uh, whenever I can make money fast without having to work for it, uh, yes, I mean, that kind of uh, attitude. Uh, so we will always, always have that with us. It look, looks like it's ingrained in the fallen man to uh, look for the quick way out. Uh, and just recently we had that kind of uh, thing playing out here in South Africa with uh, MTI, uh, with people being conned into uh, get rich quick with a Bitcoin trading. But in the end it came out, there was, there was real, no real trading. It was a Ponzi scheme at the back end. So uh, then Lee posed the question to say, where is this leading? Is this perhaps the start of a trend that say we can do this we can topple capitalism uh, and well we have seen around the world that uh, where the youth and and 
people who are connected uh, uh, band together as around a strong enough cause, they can. And we've seen it with, uh, I think, the, the probably the most recent one was the Arab Spring. When uh, was it uh, in Egypt or somewhere where they toppled the government? Uh, but uh, we've so, so these things are possible. So it come, comes back to say where there's connectivity and, and who was that that uh, actually was it Zimbabwe that uh, switched off? No, no, not Zimbabwe. Uh, in the recent elections in Uganda, uh, Museveni, who is now being the, elected again for and has been a president for, I think, almost the last 30 odd years, uh, he had a strong contender with an up and coming youngster who was also a rap singer, but he, uh, he, he, he managed to, to put his finger on all the hurts and he had a strong following. And then a week before uh, the election, uh, the government then just switched off the whole internet for a whole week. Uh, so the week of the election, people couldn't uh, WhatsApp the, or, or communicate with each other. And, uh, you know, with no surprise, Museveni came in again with about 60% of the votes. Uh, so there was a big uproar because now it didn't just affect the, the youth who wanted to talk to each other. Most businesses were affected because now you can't get emails in and you can't get uh, business doing. So uh, connectivity is becoming a big weapon and also a tool for these things. And then I'm thinking, all right, for to, to topple something like capitalism, uh, it's a big thing, but you first have to uh, get the course, word the course correctly, so that you speak to people who feel marginalized and victimized. Uh, and if enough people feel victimized, then they will move, you know, will move on that course. And I was just thinking how human nature is such that, I mean, we were all in absolute shock when the first reports came out from state capture and latent fraud in the Zuma era. Uh, and we're not talking Mickey Mouse money, we're talking billions and billions. Uh, and the la But we've become blasé. So it's almost like you feel, all right, nothing will happen about this anyway. And the latest is this whole thing of the uh, secret services fund that was really just ransacked for billions for, uh, you know, the, the pockets of some, some connected people. But it's almost like, okay, so what? There's no news. Whereas probably the pain point in society right now is this fear of people about COVID and will I get, who will be first in line with vaccine? And I could... I can see that being quite a pain point. And what I read between the lines is uh, the, uh, people's sense of, am I being treated fairly or not fairly? And I picked up an article uh, from a white uh, medical doctor who says uh, she read that uh, the, the, bl uh, the black workers uh, will be, the health workers will be the first in line to receive the vaccines. But she, uh, oh, not, not the black workers, the, the government sector workers will be first in line and before the private sector. And she said, when it comes to health, we're equally exposed. We are all dealing with the same kind of disease on a daily basis. Why make a distinction between one kind of worker and versus another kind of worker? So uh, I'm just seeing a very complex society out there, but we would... What, what would really trigger and could be something very innocent that just at that time is the, the coming together of the perfect storm of it's a pain point experienced by most people uh, with con uh, the right connectivity and there's so uh, someone that we can now uh, make the, the pig in the picture that we can take out, whether it's a politician or whether it's whatever. So... When that will happen, uh, I don't know. Is it possible? Yes, certainly. But uh, it will rely very much on a pain point. Uh, so uh, I'm not too worried about the greed factor. People will come and go. There will always be a sucker for a new scam. Uh, but uh, I think I'm more uh, intrigued by your question. Can this lead to something bigger 
like toppling capitalism. So uh, yeah, so that's my little bit of ranting on today's uh, forum. All right, thanks, uh, Jasper. Uh, looks like we might have Trevor coming into the picture. <laughs> so uh, Trevor, yeah, uh, do you want to uh, see if your bandwidth is not being dominated by the uh, anarchists yep. and the, the I, manipulators and uh, can you actually say something? Uh, I could get into trouble here um, because in the other office is a 12 year old who understood more about GameStop uh, than most people in South Africa. Uh, she told me all about it on Friday when she heard this was the topic uh, as a 12 year old. And, and I think the point, um, I mean, uh, the question has been asked twice uh, I've heard here, is this the toppling of capitalism? Uh, no, this, this is the proof that capitalism is alive and well and will always be. Um, because it's founded upon uh, those people that uh, can make more money than others from inside information. Um, that's what I think we have. And what the hell is capitalism anyway? I don't think there is a system called capitalism. So uh, if you find one, uh, point out to me exactly what it is. Um, but I think the point that I, I want to make here is that... Um, uh, this is an example of what the technology is leading us to, uh, that you can build a database of connected individuals, like-minded individuals, and you can do a Trump. Um, uh, you can bring these people together a la QAnon, uh, and you can uh, push them and manipulate them to wherever you want to go. Uh, and I believe that these are really sophisticated market manipulators who turned around and said, listen, we understand this marketplace. Uh, we understand how the institutions work, uh, how they have to have a quarterly um, a balancing of their books. And these players knew exactly when was the right time to get everyone ready to actually go out there. And they used this mob uh, anarchy uh, type analogy. I, I think it's fascinating. It's all about scale. Uh, and I think if we are sitting in this world today working off this technology uh, and we want to make money in this capitalist world, uh, and I believe even in the socialist world, uh, some people, Ed, also want to make a little bit of money uh, to achieve the things that they want to achieve. Uh, we've got to be thinking about what is it that we've got that the market really wants? Um, what does the market really need at the moment? And I think we're getting all the clues. Uh, the market is hungry for actually making money. And it's built upon a bunch of youngsters that have been brought up in a gamification society. Um, and that, as I said on Friday, if I was a 20 year old today, I would be turning around, I would be getting every bit of deposit I could get from a blooming Coke bottle. And I would take in, be taking 100% of my money if I knew what to press on this blooming cell phone of mine, because Ivan won't teach me how to do this. Um, I, would be, I would be going after um, all the big funds. There's enough information here to actually uh, on, on everything. And I mean, uh, you know, I hope you've actually been picking up the individuals who are the savvy minds um, in the markets right now. These are the guys uh, uh, just over the weekend. Uh, Michael Saylor, have you been following him? Then there's this guy, Tika Tawari. Uh, have you been having a look at him? I've been talking about Nuriel Rubini out of the Mark Jarrett uh, camp and then um, Max Kaiser out of Russia today. I mean, these socialists are taking the capitalist uh, to the cleaners at the moment uh, and playing, outplaying them and outsmarting them at their own game. Um, and, and this is just going to, you know what, if you're not in this game and you're not playing, you are going to be left behind big time. And I think we've got to be thinking about right now, 2021, how do we apply gamification? We've been talking about it long enough. Uh, let me tell you, if it's not applied this year, 2021, you might as well pack up your computer, go off to your desert island, as I'd love to do, shut up shop because you're not in the game. Uh, the inflation of 
um, uh, assets that people really need uh, or really want is just going to go through the roof uh, and you're not going to be able to, uh, uh, to pick these assets up and you're just going to be one of the 7.6 billion uh, odd people who are struggling out there uh, and the few savvy people who are thinking about what's going on here and analyzing this and looking to apply this in products are the ones that are actually going to be successful in the next 10 years. This, this what happened in GameStop and what is currently happening in all the other stocks. If we are not taking this and really taking lessons very quickly out of this, uh, we're actually dummies. Uh, so that's me, I'm off. <laughs> Thanks, Trevor. Yeah, so yeah, it's 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 it is interesting. Uh, I am a perennial cynic when it comes to these sorts of things because uh, I think where there's big money, the big money is always going to ultimately win, and I think it's already been proven in this particular situation in in, in its very short. Uh, short life so yeah so hedge fund took a club guess what somebody popped up and said he has 2.8 billion dollars to get you back on your feet again you know when uh game, when gamestop uh, goes through the floor again which it's going to do um guess what's happened to the guys who bought in at 472 dollars a share they're going to lose all their money and who are those people those are the little guys and nobody's going to come back to them and say hey you know i'm sorry that happened here's some extra money to to beef up your portfolio again it's just this just ain't going to happen so I think there's been a, a brief and temporary realignment of some fortunes, uh, and I think uh, it's going to just uh, it's just going to revert back to 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 where the big money and the big control is. And uh, personally, I think uh, money uh, is above everything in this world. So I don't think governments have got any control of it. I don't, uh, they like to steal it, but I don't think they've got any control. I think they are controlled by the big money. And I think the Robin Hood situation has actually proven that 100%. You know, here was an organization built its reputation on we here for the little guy. And guess what? As soon as things started going pear shaped, they shut down the little guys, allowed the big guys to carry on playing. And now they're going to get taken to the cleaners because they're going to have a class action suit against them. So you know, who's who's actually won? I think I think Trevor's hundred percent correct. It's it was the smart people with the big money who were already at the top. Uh, you know, the guys that plowed money into GameStop uh, from an investment perspective, they've they've cleaned up. Uh, they've taken all the little guys' money. Said thanks very much. Uh, we've recouped our investment. Uh, you know, we can we can cash out and guess what? The the share will plunge and uh, and uh, but they would have they would have made their made their pound of flesh out of out of the, out of the million people who thought they were being clever. And unfortunately, I don't think they were. Um, I think they just, uh, they've been taken for a ride. Um, there's been a realignment of uh, some fortunes in the marketplace, but that realignment's happening in the 0.01% uh, end of the market. Um, and yeah, the, the little guys don't, don't have, a, have a hope. So yeah, is there a possibility of this making big changes? Well, yeah, I think... Uh, I think the hedge funds are going to reevaluate their formulas. Are they going to reevaluate their strategies? Um, this whole uh, quarterly um, process, uh, you know, from the reading that I've done, has been based on some fairly crude algorithms because they haven't needed to really refine them up until now. Um, it's because the sheer weight of the sizes of the investments have made it impossible for people to play against them. They've been a, they've been given a little bit of a wake up call. So guess what? where the smart money is massive effort is going to go into re reworking those algorithms re reworking those systems and and mitigating uh, this kind of thing from happening ag again as best as they can um, what is the potential for change personally i think until blockchain becomes a reality in this market um, i think there's no chance of change um, i think the, the big players are always going to win um blockchain has its limitations at the moment those limitations are primarily speed based um so until we can overcome the speed issues related with with blockchain transactions in these kinds of financial markets where you need to be able to process you know millions of transactions a second blockchain just simply doesn't have that capability at the moment but with the maturity of of that technology and perhaps 
you know the development of quantum computing we can start moving into those directions but is it going to happen in the next 10 years probably not um i think the markets are going to continue to be dominated by the heavyweights and the little guys are generally always going to lose so there's the cynic in me uh coming out and uh yeah don't know where that leaves us lee but uh topic for tomorrow perhaps yeah so i i don't know if it's following the same thread but i i'm interested in this it there's always been what we call the generational gap right um but it, there's something different in the dynamics with the baby boomers uh with this and and we and i look at us and we actually are the baby boomers right we we represent all of us represent that uh generation and here you have a huge number of people who also accumulated a huge amount of wealth and are now sitting in their 60s and 70s having run big corporations having continue to find ways to to keep that wealth lot largely and graham codrington is um, he's a futurist here in south africa and he is saying that uh, one of the things that's playing out in gamestop as an example and various other areas is the uh, a power struggle between the baby boomers and the current generation uh, it's more than a gap. It's more than it's the baby boomers trying to hold on to power, trying to keep things the way they are, protecting their interests, uh, ensuring that things stay as they want them to stay. And the younger generation using platforms like social media to because they don't have the size, they don't have the power, uh, the num but but they can. Uh, get large groups of people together quickly and and push and push and push. So I, I'm interested to know what you think about is there a, a subtle or not so subtle uh, power struggle between the baby boomers and especially the current generation? Um, not if they're called Generation Z or whether there's another letter of the alphabet that they're now being called. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'd love to hear your thoughts tomorrow. Great, thanks, thanks, Lee. So yeah, whether you're Generation A or Z or somewhere in between, and where do you go from there? I'm not too sure, but uh, let's see if we can bridge some generational gaps tomorrow. Uh, on that note, have a great day, folks, and we'll see you on tomorrow. Cheers now.